My life's completely different from what it was. I was so mad at myself. I wanted to put a shotgun under my chin and pull the trigger to just blow my head off. To be able to put thoughts together is a lot to do. Brain injury is devastating. I was going to college at SUNY New Paltz, and I worked on top of the Mohawk Mountain, the Quaker-owned hotel on top, and I got done with work at around 11 p.m. midnight, um, and I was driving down the mountain, and I probably reached for something. They think a deer ran in front of my car. I don't remember the accident at all. I went into an instant coma because my head hit the metal that lined the windshield and I put a hole right here in my forehead. And I was in a coma for about a month and a half. I'm Pam Carr, and I'm the Structured Day Program Manager for Bridges for Brain Injury. I um, put together members' plans that come here for a Structured Day Program, set their goals after speaking with them, and then go into their team meetings and discuss those goals and where they want to get to. So I set up different activities throughout the month. Uh, for day program and Saturday rec events, um, which could be anything from going out into the community or doing a community project within the building that we will take out to somebody and deliver. Sometimes during the weekdays as well, we go out into the community. Today, for instance, they went to Gleaner's Community Kitchen to eat lunch. And then our other trip today was the bowling alley. So a few went there, a few went to Gleaner's Kitchen. This month we're working on doing baking groups and making cookie trays to hand out to area nursing homes and stuff. And then we are also working towards, or we have a holiday bazaar coming up at the end of November where some of our members are gonna get to sell some of their crafts. While trying to make it home from my cousin's wedding reception, my boss told me if I was not at the barn before 2 a.m. not to bother ever coming to her property again. I was severely drunk. I then drank a half a gallon of Jack Daniels straight out of the bottle in less than 15 minutes. I tried to make a 90 degree turn to the left at way over 100 mile an hour. The police say I drove through two telephone poles before it ejected me from the truck. My brain slammed around inside my skull so hard it severed my optic nerves. It detached them, which makes me legally and totally blind. I spent five years in coma, and if you ask me, it was only two seconds. Because when I come out of my coma the day after Christmas in 1998, I woke up, I sat up and said, a dozen eggs, a pound of bacon, and five million pieces of milk? Now, please. I meant to say glasses. And I don't know why, but for some reason it came out pieces. Christopher actually has a couple of groups that he goes to speak to um, each week about um, drinking and driving. He has grown in that he's out talking about it now, whereas before he wouldn't. I would be happy just to stop one person from making that nasty mistake that I made. had a stroke and I was at my nephew's funeral. Prior to that, I lost my oldest child. They both died of blood clots. Then I was transferred to St. Mary's Brain Unit. I stayed for one year and I'm home now and I'm thankful. It was from a uh, gunshot wound to the head. A 45 caliber handgun was placed here and it powderized my face and blew it out the back of my neck. I received my brain injury from, from, my, from my motorcycle accident in California. July 18th, 2007, I was 25. I walked, but I walked with the limp. And 
my um, left hand. I can't hardly grip on anything. My brain injury was to the right hemisphere of my brain, and and that greatly reduced my my co coordination of, of my left side. Brain injury affects a number of areas of your life, everything from the uh, psychological to the physiological. So yeah, there's the challenges of learning to walk again, talk again, hold a pen and write again. I needed to, to relearn how to write legibly and I'm still lear learning how to, to throw a baseball again. Nick is a story within of himself. Um, you know, tra tragedy to triumph, really, for Nick. He's one of our veteran members. He's been here from the beginning, and he brings his sense of humor in. He has his own home. He drives a car. A lot of our members don't do that. They don't have those abilities to be able to do that. So Nick is kind of the bar. Relearning the basic stuff is very, very frustrating. I mean, whether you're talking about just remembering how things work or dealing with just the overwhelming cognitive pressure of being in a crowd and remembering to find your groceries right, to uh, dealing with things like paralysis or limbs that don't work like they should anymore. Before, it was like I had to start all over. I'm crying. I learn how to talk again, and I'm thankful. It demands a new level of patience. My thinking is completely different. I don't remember things as easily. It really takes you away from yourself. Because, it, because I'm going back to school, I, I have very severe difficulty on tests. I can't read size 12 font anymore. I remember when I first took a college class at Suing Geneseo. When I read my textbook, I'd go to bed each night crying because it caused me that much pain because now that I've taken more college classes, I have to scan the book into a computer and I have a computer program read it out loud to me light each sentence in green and each word in yellow. It's just a... <sighs> but the hardest part about it is finding your place back in society. You find yourself outside of the tribe, no longer contributing. I was a CNA for 30 years at Monroe Community Hospital. I knew everybody in the building, all the residents, because after being there so long, you know them. So that's my next goal, to go visit them. My favorite thing about the Bridges program is their signature program called the Wildlife Defenders, which is an education outreach program that is owned and run by adults that suffer from a traumatic brain injury. Soki here is one of our many education animals out of about 40 different species. Now she is native to New York. This is a North American porcupine. We raised Sophie since she was a baby so that she's quite imprinted to humans. She does have 30,000 quills underneath this fur. Researching and taking care of the animals is a big part of our work. They all need their own <laughs> habitats to maintain. They all have a unique diet that they get down on. Of course, she's enjoying her morning pretzel. We have porcupines and kangaroos. We have koi poos. We have armadillos, macaws, and everything from stick bugs and cockroaches to alligators and lizards of all kinds. The point of the Wildlife Defender Program is not only to get these amazing wildlife education animals up close and personal and into the classrooms for the kids to meet, but also to help our program members get back into the community, build their uh, confidence and self-esteem while uh, giving back to the world. I actually worked in brain injury for 15 years, and I've worked here for five years now. I've always been interested in the animals. The members are able to interact with the animals by helping to take care of them, keeping their enclosures clean. They also take a big part in raising these animals. We get a lot of our animals just as tiny babies and the uh, members get to watch them grow. They get to handle most every animal while it's still young. 
So they get that interaction, it's pretty special. You can see it in their eyes, they just love it. My advocate, Yvonne, we were talking about places to go and she wanted me to go in the city and I said, I don't want to go in the city. I want to go in the country and I want to see birds and butterflies and trees and animals. And this is where I came to Bridges. And I'm also beginning to like them. How about that? <laughs> Coco, I love. I help with the shows for Wildlife Defenders. I present on different animals. I've memorized some of the speeches. I also help other people with their speeches to be able to deliver a good performance. It's very rewarding to do a Wildlife Defender show. I was taking, yeah, it's birth control pills. Aaron had his stroke because he was doing drugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Heroin? Yes. Cocaine? Yes. C clean. Clean. He's clean now. <laughs> yes. He learned his lesson. Ma major uh, t talking hard process. M hard work pays off. So Sue and Aaron are our Bridges for Brain Injury Incorporated couple. Um, they're engaged to be married, and I have to tell you that their story is such an inspiration to me because they met through here um, at Bridges and had seen each other kind of across the room, didn't say too much to each other at first. I started coming to Bridges about six months before Aaron, and when Aaron walked in, Aaron could not talk very well. That's how we met, is that I basically spent every day, three days a week, teaching him how to speak clearly. We just created a bond after a year. Sue is uh, somebody that I look up to. She's kind of like the mom of the pack, and everybody's very respectful to her. Initially, when I had my stroke, I had a difficult time talking. I had to go through speech therapy to learn how to eat again because my left side is paralyzed, so I can understand everything that Aaron's going through, <laughs> even now. <laughs> and so I know what to, sorry, I know how to present information to him because I know how overwhelming it is to have too many choices. Sometimes the answer has to be supplied to you. This is the best part for me. For them to get married, Aaron needed to work on his um, walking, and he also wanted to be able to say his wedding vows. And so until he can do that, they're not going to get married. Um, so those are their goals. So not only do you build friendships here, but you can build relationships that will last a lifetime. A month after my stroke, I had had blood clots in my lungs. One of the things I learned was to sing, and that would keep my lungs open. And when I came to Bridges and I met Aaron, and I said, one of the first things you have to do before you can talk is to sing, because you already know the words, and that you learn cadence of how to speak. So one of the first songs I had taught him, because he was always saying, God is good to me, was the Johnny Appleseed song. Oh, the Lord is He's good, good to me, me. And, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun, the rain, and the apple seed. Oh, the Lord is good to me. <laughs> I think the one person who stands out to me the most with the most change is Aaron. I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> um... He just has grown so much. He's, he's, I, I'm so sorry. He's been involved in speech therapy um, within the last six months, I'd say. You couldn't understand him when he talked. And now you can. <laughs> and he can put sentences together. And his words just come out so much clearer. Aaron loves to cook. He loves to shop at Wegmans and cook their recipes from their menu book. Every Friday, he brings it in and serves it to everybody. A 
especially with a brain injury, people think it's automatically an intelligence issue when it has nothing to do with that. If you see a physical disability, then there's obviously a mental and a, and a language disability there, and that's not the case. What I find is that people aren't stereotypically prone to think that somebody older who has a physical disability has a mental disability. They might realize that there could have been a stroke or something like that. It's our younger group of people that get that stereotypical behavior. The next biggest difficulty I face is with my speech because every, everyone judges me. I at least interpret judgment from how they respond to me. The, the people that don't know me tend to talk to me slow and, and like I'm mentally handicapped. And that's offensive. They're supposed to be normal. Um, they're supposed to look normal. And when they don't, it's automatically assumed that there's something else wrong with them. I'd like for everybody to just remember that it, it could be you at any time. So the way that I treat my members is how I, I would want to be treated or I would want one of my family members to be treated with respect and dignity, quality. I just want the rest of the world that doesn't have any experience or even knowledge of the brain injured population to not be so quick to judge and, and make negative and false assumptions. You never know what someone's been through. Bridges is like one of the better organizations just for people that, you know, with brain injuries, just to be independent, to do wildlife defenders in front of people, to help you feel good about yourself and to make a difference, you know, in the community. That is the reason why I really like being a part. And when they get up there, and they public speak in front of these children. It gives them a great self-esteem boost that they really need. We are putting adults with disabilities in front of school-aged children as diversity. So they see these, these folks as no disability whatsoever. They become role models. They become educators. It is extremely special. And to watch it is it's amazing. And to watch the people in the audience, their opinion of brain injury, it's definitely changed. Bridges has helped me significantly because it is a recurring event that I, that I can count on. It subjects me to, to people that don't judge me by how I talk, walk, and, and it puts me in, in a, a very accepting environment. A great thing about Bridges is I like helping other people better understand what is happening to them, to have a better day, just to help them have a meal or help them take a walk outside. Oh my gosh, Jessica Lynn Wurtenberg. I call her my G-F-I-T. That stands for Girlfriend in Training. He is one of my best friends, but I call him my boyfriend in training. If I start to get upset or somebody starts to get me going, she'll ask me if I would like to go for a walk. I say yes. I stand up from my chair. We go outside and we walk, and it does help. I enjoy this job. It's very close to my heart, and it's very rewarding. And I got to tell you, most of my members are very inspirational to me. I am extremely proud to work here each and every day. I have done hundreds of programs, and each time is just like the first. When I see a member get up there and present on an animal, my heart just it swells. It's better when you have people around you that care to regain everything that you have lost. If it was not for this Bridges for Brain Injury program, I would have nothing. I would sit at home all day sitting in a recliner, just spaced out, just like, duh. I, I have gained a much higher level of patience and understanding of, of other people. It's made me more of a humble person and someone that is more into meaningful things. Before, I was just out for get, making money and going out and partying. When I go back to college, I want to work a job that I'm helping others, not where I just, you know, make a quick buck. I like having more morals now. It's hard to feel lucky about an injury like that, but the fact is, 
I couldn't be happier where I'm at and doing what I do and helping to rescue others with the injury. Because his right side is gone and my left side is gone and he doesn't talk well and I have no problem talking. I just say, <laughs> together we're a whole person. Yep. <laughs> and that's just our slogan. <laughs> Sometimes it's the path we've taken in life that has, that has arrived where we are. I'm just a blessed, blessed girl. That's how I'm able to see a lot of this. I learned that you can uh, do this. Because the only difference between you and I right now in life is a split second in time. And we all struggle with different challenges, but when you put them all together, it's one.